Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Werewell in North Hampshire. It's about four miles to the south of Andover. Now regular viewers will know that we've done a walk here in the past but uh, in that particular video we were concentrating on a route that took us to the south of the village uh, uh, and took us to Chill Bolton. Today we're going to be doing a roughly six and a half mile circular route to the north of the village. So we'll go through the village, have a quick look at the river test and then we'll start heading northwards, heading towards uh, a little village called uh, Goodworth Clatford. We'll pass by the river Anton and then we'll be making our way uh, across a golf course and towards the edge of Harewood Forest and back. Should be a super walk. Now I'm filming uh, right at the beginning of November and you can probably tell from the steam in my breath it's quite a chilly morning. Uh, the sun is out, there was a frost last night, it's about two or three degrees at the moment but it is supposed to warm up so hopefully Logan will be able to take his fleece off later on. <laughs> but it's going to be a really good fresh day, ideal for walking, so do come along with us. <laughs> I timed that nicely. <laughs> well, I've parked my car at a car park right next to the, the church, which is just behind me here, the uh, Church of um, St. Peter and Holy Cross. Now, I mentioned before, we've been here before, and in that video, I did a fairly extensive uh, exploration of the village, and I don't really want to duplicate that. So if you haven't already seen that, do check it out. It really is a gorgeous village, full of pretty thatched buildings and cottages, so well presented. It really is a, a delight to walk through. Anyway, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to quickly uh, walk through the village and we'll start the walk uh, by the River Test. Well I've made my way to the south of the village and we're going to start our walk properly as it were by the River Test and what an idyllic setting to, to start the walk. But, uh, one of Hampshire's great chalk streams, quite a flow to it today, we've had a fair bit of rain over the last few days. Well, on a day like today, with the sun out, glinting on the water there. Beautiful, isn't it? Right, we are going to head back onto the, the little road that goes through the village and start heading northwards into the countryside. Ah, there's the footpath I'm looking for. That tells us we're going to be going on the Test Way, which is a, a 44 mile long distance path that goes from Walbury Hill in West Berkshire all the way down to Ealing in Southampton. Although we're only literally going to go on it for a few yards, it bears off to the right. We will meet up with it later on. But our walk is going to take us on the left. And just as we go over these steps, you're going to have to take my word for this, but we're going to be crossing an old disused railway track, but there'll be more evidence of it shortly, so I'll tell you all about it then, but yeah, this is the, this is basically the track, so <laughs> it's now somebody's garden over there, and brambles over there. Apologies for the breathlessness, we had a little bit of an uphill bit there. <laughs> right, so I say the test way goes in that direction. But we're going to be heading over here. Wow, <laughs> I think, uh, the fingers crossed, this uh, sky is going to be fairly blue today. So the visibility is going to be great. And here's uh, some evidence of that railway line. It was the old Fullerton to Hurstbourne line. It was only six miles long and it formed a link between uh, the main West of England line, the sort of London to Exeter line at Hurstbourne 
and the Andover to Redbridge line, the old Spratt and Winkle line at Fullerton Junction. And it opened in 1885. Um, it was the London and South Western Railway that ran it and it closed to passengers in 1931 and to freight in 1956. But it's lovely, some of these uh, bridges that are so well built and really just to go over what effectively is a, a farm track and certainly stood the test of time. We've got a little uphill section to do come out into the sunshine and we're now going to follow this hedge uphill and hopefully we're going to get some great views when we get to the top. We've made it to the top of the, the ridge, <laughs> it's warmed us up a bit and from here wow, uh, quite stunning views. Hopefully this has come across on the camera okay because it is still a bit quite uh, quite hazy but isn't that uh, quite, uh, quite stunning. Now I don't know if you can make out, I'll see if I can get a, a close-up photo of the uh, uh, Chilbolton Observatory over there was built in 1967 uh, on an old um, uh, what was once an RAF airfield in the Second World War and just panning around so where well, was somewhere town in that valley there and uh, still quite a bit of greenery in all the uh, deciduous trees I say a lovely pretty much a blue sky, just a few bits of cloud, but for the time of year, perfect. stop another excuse just to stop and admire this spectacular view behind me it really is uh, quite beautiful so um, we're going to head down this little uh, side of a hill here across the road and then we're going to follow along the line of that field with the hedge on our left and this is going to take us to our next village and we can't quite just see yet but uh, there's the river Anton out there meandering its way between the two fields and we'll, we'll see that in much more detail quite shortly. Just stop to get our, our bearings, show you uh, <laughs> where we've been. So that's the hill that we were on top of and we've made our way along the side of this field here. Looks so uh, it's been planted with some sort of winter crop, winter wheat perhaps. Interesting, just in front of me here, a little object. Um, I think it's got something to do with the old railways, but not probably the Fullerton to Hurstbourne Railway. Uh, probably the Spratt and Winkle line, which we will see some evidence of shortly. Okay, um, now we're going to make a tiny little detour down this path here that signposted the River Anton Way. Literally 30 or 40 yards to have our first peep at the, the River Anton this morning. And here it is, so we will see it uh, in much uh, greater detail later on but I love this little bridge 
that crosses it here and so this is looking uh, uh, upstream as it were some beautiful swans just appearing around the corner there so the river Anton it's only eight miles long it rises at uh, the Anton Lakes Nature Reserve just north of Andover and then it it meets the River Test at uh, Chilbolton but it's another one of these uh, quite exquisite um, chalk streams ah oh, don't they look quite alluring these uh, swans one two three of them in the morning sunshine beautiful and then if I just slowly turn around, I say the sun is quite low, but um, we should get some beautiful views of the, the shadows and the reflections on the river from the, from the um, foliage each side of the bank. folks just look at the colours on that isn't that quite terrific I love this time of year a little bit of green a little bit of gold a little bit of yellow of course the sunshine really bringing it out right we're gonna kick on we're just about to come into the little village of uh, uh, Goodworth Clatford it was a, originally a Saxon settlement uh, by the the river here known as um, Godder's Enclosure and it was called uh, Godord in the Doomsday Book. I think the Clatford bit uh, uh, relates to so something like Burdock Ford but again just looking right over there again the, the colours is uh, uh, quite a variety of trees, lovely willow over there as well. <laughs> this could easily make a, a picture on a postcard couldn't it? So this is the the River Anton here. It really is quite um, quite big. So we're on the southern bank. Just cross over here. Interesting that I mean you've got the main river there and then there's this little stream on the other side. Now I wonder um, I mentioned earlier that um, there was a another railway line that we were going to look at indeed there was one uh, just to my right and that was the old Spratt and Winkle line that ran from uh, Andover through to Redbridge and indeed uh, there was a, a station here at uh, uh, or called Clatford and I'll see if we can find where that was uh, the, the line is long gone closed in the, the 1960s and before the railway line there in fact was uh, there was a canal that also ran from uh, Andover down to Southampton it was 22 miles long and uh, opened in 1794 but it was never much of a success and uh, closed in the 1850s in fact uh, I think it was the London and South Western Railway bought the canal filled it in and used most of it as a track bed for their Spratt and Winkle line and indeed I, I did find a, an old photograph on the internet uh, of the, the old railway line when it was still here running alongside the river at this uh, almost at this exact spot and it is interesting that you've got uh, this little stream alongside the river and I see there's a, a bridge well there are two bridges you've got the main bridge that go, obviously goes over the, the main part of the river and there's this little bridge here I wonder whether this was part of the old canal. I'm not sure. It, it, the bridge doesn't really look big enough. Um, it may well just have been a, a stream built for sheep washing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably talking absolute rubbish. <laughs> well, we're going to do another little detour here. Seeing as we're in the village, let's have a, a little look through. This is the Royal Oak pub. And I was reading that uh, it was badly destroyed by a flying bomb in World War II and was largely rebuilt. There is another pub in the village called the Clatford Arms. 
Anyway, we're going to have a little wander through. I want to see if we can find where the old railway station used to be. Well, I think this is uh, the only evidence that we're going to see that there was a, a railway station here once, the uh, or a sign. But I believe where this little car park is, is where the station used to be. Now I hasten to add, Logan and I are not going to attempt this. <laughs> but this ford here is right by uh, where the, um, the track used to, to go. And indeed, if I just pan over to the left, there's a, a little information board here. Now I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to see this because of the it's in the shade, but here we go, that's the the old Spratt and Winkle line, so there's the, the Clatford station here. And there are some, some photographs here. Um, so just looking up here, so yeah, that's the station. This is the, the Ford here. And there's a photograph of uh, what the station looked like. And another one down here. And that little bit of tr um, uh, level crossing is the path to where this Ford is by me on the right. And then, ah, oh, here we go. Level crossing path to the footbridge and deep Ford. So where that car is, <laughs> is, uh, well, that's where it was. And then just over to the side here is where the signal box used to be, but I don't think there's, um, well actually there's a, a little bit of brickwork down here. I wonder if that had anything to do with it, possibly. Now this is just on the other side of that um, wooden fence we saw earlier on with Clatford written on it. This is all that remains of the old railway platform, just this little stretch of brickwork here. You can see how close it is to the, to the river, can't you? Well, the last thing that I want to have a little look at in the village before we leave it is the church, which is uh, just behind me here. It's St Peter's Church, and the church uh, from which the present structure has grown began as just a small nave and chancel to which a south aisle was added at the end of the 12th century. The tower was added in 1340, replacing an earlier one. The north aisle was also added in the 14th century and both aisles were rebuilt in the 15th century. The shape of the spire changed from square to octagonal in 1860 and the south porch dates from 1872. And uh, St Peter's Church room to the side, that was built in the 1990s. But it really is looking quite uh, glorious in this uh, autumnal sunshine. And I love the, uh, look at this bench down here with the, uh, are they swan heads or duck heads? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever they are, they look smashing. I'll tear this sunshine now there's actually a bit of heat in it which is lovely well, we've left uh, uh, Goodworth Clatford a beautiful village with uh, full of again thatched houses and uh, quite uh, gorgeous uh, properties again in superb condition uh, a beautiful little village so we've crossed the A3057 and uh, we've been making our way up a a shaded track that cuts through a, a golf course which is just behind me here. It's uh, the Hampshire Golf Club. It was founded in 1993 and it's set in something like 240 acres and because it's uh, on this free draining chalk downland it means that the course is very rarely closed due to bad weather. What beautiful scenery they've got to play their golf in as well. Uh -huh. Aha! <laughs> well someone uh, did a, a wayward shot there Logan. You're gonna test that out for us. Yeah I don't think you can eat it. It shouldn't be there. 
Okay, for folks that uh, might be doing this walk after watching the video, which I know some people do, once you get to the top of the golf course or the path that comes out at the top, you come to a T junction of paths and initially you turn right and uh, carry on up here until you come to a whopping great big electricity pylon. Well, just after that uh, electricity pylon, you need to look out for uh, a track that bears left. It almost doubles back on itself just here. And uh, this is now going to take us, well, there are some earthworks on the right there, but I think that's just the remnants of uh, an old chalk pit. And then uh, this little track here is going to take us um, along the side of uh, some woodland. I think it's called uh, Upping Cops, something like that anyway. And then uh, we should get some great views very shortly on the left hand side. Oh, there's a lovely fringe of hazels through here. <laughs> I'll make a few walking sticks. But if we just, if I just pop my head out from underneath the, uh, the trees here. And we've got some, well, ignore the electricity pylons and the uh, solar panels in the far distance. <laughs> Apart from that, what a smashing view. And uh, I don't, I'll have to check my map. I'm guessing that might be Andover in the far distance. That uh, I can't think what else it would be. Right, um, now, just in front of me here, I'm just gonna have to move out of the sun so that you should be able to see this if I slowly turn around. That is the old uh, uh, keeper's cottage over there. And uh, I pan round, so we're gonna carry on uh, along the side of this field. I, tell you, it's glor I keep on saying it's glorious, but it, it is. And in the far distance, that's the outskirts of uh, Harewood Forest, which is our next destination. for a, a footpath sign which I can just see in front of me. Just as this concrete track goes to the left we take the path to the right and that is going to take us into the outskirts of Harewood Forest. Okay well Logan is now on squirrel patrol and this is uh, say the outskirts of um, Harewood Forest. It's uh, well, one of the uh, largest areas of woodland in Hampshire, outside of the, the New Forest, of course. And it was one of the royal forests in the late Saxon times. And by the 14th century, Andover was an important centre for the tanning industry. And that required a, a large amount of oak bark from the forest. So uh, there was strong local demand uh, for the woods here until really the 19th century. I'll tell you what, I'm absolutely loving it in here. If I just stop for a second. Complete silence, can't hear a thing. When you think all the troubles that are going on in the world at the moment and then come to a place like this and it just seems so far away. Beautiful. Uh, again, a, an important part of the walk if you're trying to follow it from the map that I put up at the start. Um, look out for this uh, footpath sign here in front of a sort of metal gate, I suppose you'd call it. Um, we want to take the sign to the right, even though it's got L written on it, but um, we don't want to carry on in there. That'll take us even deeper into the forest. <laughs> it looks very spooky in there as well, but instead, we're taking this route here 
and uh, it slightly goes uphill. Well, just looking across the field there to the side of the woods, there's a very impressive looking deer hide or deer seat. Uh, Logan and I are used to seeing quite a few of those in the New Forest, but they tend to be quite basic, you know, just a, a ladder and then a seat at the top. But that one looks quite palatial, doesn't it? Quite cosy in the winter, I should imagine. Our last little section downhill. This is going to take us back to Werewolf. A little sunken track and looking at the steep banks either side, I reckon this must be quite an ancient uh, pathway, possibly an old drover's route perhaps. It's got to be something like that. Very uh, atmospheric nonetheless. And here we are now back into Werewolf and uh, a little bit more evidence of the old uh, Fullerton to Hurstbourne railway line, a, a bridge that's been demolished. Of course, Werewolf Station was uh, just a little bit further on to the right. Uh, the building is still there, I believe, but it's a, a residential property now. Well, just before we head back to the car, I just saw a few of these beautiful houses. We didn't actually walk this end of the village when we came here last time, but oh, isn't that so pretty? And then what about this one here on my right? Oh, quite divine. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do uh, leave a comment. Well, that's super walk today. The weather has been quite glorious, your typical fresh autumnal day and some of the scenery was quite spectacular. We're off to the White Lion in the village for some light refreshment. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.